Some of the principles of proficiency-based learning is that there is a clear articulation of what you want students to know and be able to do at the end of a learning process. Um, sometimes the outcomes are called proficiencies, competencies, standards, common core standards, you know, I mean, there are lots of different words applied to this. But the idea is that it's at a high level and it's what really do you want students to know and be able to do? I know when I started teaching back in 1985, I never asked those questions. It was all about what am I as the instructor putting into this class? What readings am I assigning? What assignments? But I didn't think at all about what students needed to come out on the other end. So it's backward design, starting with where you want them to be and then working back from that. You, somebody said the phrase voice and choice, and that is a mantra in Maine public schools. Students should have voice and choice. And you can hear little fourth graders saying, I felt like I had increased voice and choice in this. <laughs> um, it's really cute. Um, the idea that students should have a say in how they learn and how they best demonstrate their learning. Because we know that when people are given choice, engagement tends to go up. And how many of us at some point in our lives have and say, oh, the students just don't seem engaged, right? So a way to increase in student engagement. Another mantra that you hear in Maine is learning is the constant, time is the variable. In the old system, time was the constant. So um, I'll use an elementary school example uh, that I remember from my grade school. You got a set of spelling words on Monday, and on Friday, you had a spelling test. The next Monday, you got another set of spelling words, regardless of what you made on the previous Friday's test, OK? So time was the constant. Whether you got it or not varied by student, all right? So in this, in this situation, the standards are articulated. And the goal is for every student to get to those standards. That's why the belief that people have intelligence and can learn is so critical to this. If we acknowledge their different learning styles, as somebody in the back pointed out, and allow them different ways of demonstrating their learning. We use a lot of formative assessments, uh, low stakes formative assessments, and then at the end of the semester, a summative assessment, which is really where are you at this point in time, okay? The formative assessments say you either have it or you don't, but it's not a pass-fail. It's a you've got it or you're not yet there. How else can we get you there? Um, and this is actually a screen, I think, from Capella University, the, the system that they use. Our software will be up and running in January, and it will be, have a similar kind of dashboard for students where they all will be able to see where the, they are in all the various competencies, and their faculty members and their advisors can also go in and see and, and then diagnose what else they still need to do. <clears throat> and we talk about different paces of learning. There's, uh, and, You'll see in a minute, some of the competency-based programs are completely self-paced. We are not. Uh, we believe that there's like a teacher pace, that's kind of the recommended pace, and then there's different paces for different learners. Um, we are still part of the University of Maine system. We are still in a 15-week semester. So we do allow students to vary their paces throughout the semester, but by the end of the semester, they do still get a grade that shows where they are. And I can talk more about what happens if they don't get there um, later and probably in questions and answers. And then finally, as I think you saw in the learning contract, part of the goal of this is not to force students to repeat stuff that they already know how to do. Let them focus their energies on learning new things instead of having to go back up over things that they have already mastered. Now, this is what's happening in the public school systems in Maine. And it's also happening in public school systems in New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Um, I'm not so, I don't think Massachusetts is quite as far along yet, but it's kind of sweeping through New England. So the question we ask ourselves was, um, 
if these students are going to be coming to us, 14,000 of them are due to graduate in Maine in 2018, and they've been given voice and choice, they're used to formative assessments, they're focused on achieving proficiencies instead of getting an average passing grade, how will they react if they walk into our traditional college classroom especially if they're put in a passive learning environment, they're given a set syllabus with no voice and choice. I've joked with my faculty, I said, you know, um, we've all been trained to create these very clear syllabi, right? This is your contract with your students, it needs to lay out everything very clearly, and that's what's been defined as good teaching. But I've joked with my faculty, in a few years, they're gonna hand out their very well-designed syllabus, and the students are gonna look at it and go, what? Where, where's my voice and choice here, you know? And so we made the decision that we needed, that we wanted to be the college of choice for students coming out of this kind of environment.